In this video, I'll be proving silo theorem number one. Okay, what does it say? Okay, for order of g equals m times p to the n, right? For p a prime, p prime. Okay. Uh, there exists a subgroup a subgroup of order p to the n. Okay? And we also have the requirement that m m is less than p. Okay? Okay, proof. That's a very good proof. Okay, what we do is we first look at what m times p to the n choose p to the n is. Okay, let's look at this. Okay, the permutation where you have m times p to the n things and you're choosing p to the n and you don't care about the order, right? So, Remember back to the definition, it's going to be m p to the n times m p to the n minus 1 all the way up until m p to the n uh, minus p to the n plus 1, okay? Divided by, and then we're going to have p to the n times p to the n minus 1 all the way up until 1, right? Okay, so let's notice something. Is that if I want to find the highest power, the highest power I'll denote v sub p, or v sub p, if I want to find the highest power of p such that uh, it, so let's denote it like this, m times p to the n minus Okay, right? What's this going to be equal to? It's going to be the highest power, I'll call it A, the highest power of P such that P to the A divides P to the N minus K. Okay, what does that mean? Well, it means that PM p to the n minus k divided by p to the a is an integer and that the a right there is the highest possible a for this to happen okay so that's how i'm going to denote it okay so v sub p the highest power of p that divides it okay let's look at uh v sub p of then we're going to have p to the n, right? Or, or say p to the n minus k, more specifically, right? I claim that this is going to be equal to v sub p of m times p to the n minus k, okay? Okay, first what I'm going to do is show that if p to the a divides p to the n minus k, right? Then p to the a also divides m p to the n minus k, right? Okay, and that'll also prove that if p to the a divides m p to the n minus k, then p to the a divides p to the n minus k. Okay? So I'll prove that. So let's start with this one right here. Okay? So let's look at this. So I know that p to the n minus k divided by p to the a must be an integer, right? So this must be an integer by the definition of divisibility. Well, then that's going to be p to the n minus a uh, minus 
k divided by p to the a, right? This must be an integer, right? So this is obviously an integer, an integer. So this right here must also be an integer. Okay, so we know that's an integer because an integer minus an integer is an integer, but an integer minus like a rational or irrational is not going to be an integer. Uh, something that's not an integer is an integer minus something that's not an integer is not an integer. Okay, so now we're going to have m p t n minus k right here divided by p to the a. Can I prove that this is also going to be an integer? Well, let's divide it through. I get m p to the n minus a minus k divided by p to the a, right? Okay, so this is obviously an integer. Okay, is this an integer? Well, we just specified up there that it must be. So this is also an integer. So this entire thing is an integer. Okay, so you can do the exact same argument the other way around. If I started with this, I'd have to have this be an integer, and then I can apply it there. So, I know that those two uh, statements are true. Now, I claim that VP of MP to the N minus K is the same thing as VP of P to the N minus K. Okay? How do I know this? Because the highest power that divides this is going to be also divide this. And the highest power that divides this is going to divide that. Therefore, the highest powers must be equal to each other, right? And so, what I'm going to do is because these have a common highest power that divides them, right? So, V p of p to the n minus k, I'm going to call it v, okay? This right here, what I'm going to do, is so I'm going to instead write it as m p to the n times m p to the n minus 1, all the way up until m p to the n minus p to the n plus 1, divided by p to the v. And we know this must divide into an integer, right? We know this must divide into an integer because that right there is the highest power of p that divides this, so it's an integer. Or, uh, sorry, I'll call that vk, and then I'll call this p sum of all the vks. I'm just multiplying all of the p uh, to the vks together. Okay? I'm going to divide that by... That, I'll call it p to the n factorial, because that's what it is, divided by p to the sum of v to the k. And I know this must be equal to that, because they have the same denominator and they cancel each other out. Now, I know that this top one must not be a multiple of p, right? So this top one must not be a multiple of p, right? So it's not going to be equal to a multiple of p, because if it were equal to a multiple of p, what I could do is I could bring it down there, and that's not going to be the highest power of p that divides this. That's a contradiction, so it's not going to be a multiple of p. The top one, and multiplying both sides, I get that this entire thing is not going to be a multiple of p, because if it were... This top part would be a multiple of p, right? Because if a, b is equal to a multiple of p, then a is equal to b and p, and it's thus a multiple of p, but we just said that this top part is not a multiple of p. So the entire division must not be a multiple of p, and as we said, this right here is equal to that. Therefore, therefore, all of this led up to this right here, is not a multiple of p. Whew. Okay, what's the purpose of doing that? Because now what I can do 
So this right here, this is the big pull away. This is not a multiple of P. P. Okay. So what's the purpose of doing that? Well, now what I can do is I can define omega, right? O omega to be the set of all uh, S subset of G. It's not subgroup, subset. The set of all subgroup uh, subsets of G such that the order of S is equal to P to the N. Okay, right? P to the N right there. Now, I know that the order of omega must be the order of G choosing P to the N, right? Because that's what we're doing. We're looking at all of the different ways you can choose P to the N elements from G, which has an order of M times P to the N, okay? So, M times P to the N, choose P to the N. And we know that the order of omega must not be a multiple of P because we just said it right here, right? So this is gonna be the sum by a certain, it's gonna be the sum of a bunch of disjoint orbits, right? So this is an action. So let me first define what the action is, okay? So the action, so G times G of omega, okay? G of omega is gonna be G omega the uh, translation by G, the left coset, right? Because these are subgroups. Any omega in omega is going to be a subgroup, okay? I should omega there, omega there. Okay, so now we know that this, the order of this, must be equal to the sum of the orbits, right? I'll, I'll denote S1 to SI, okay? To SN, sorry. It's going to be the sum of disjoint orbits, which is going to be the sum of G divided by GS1 plus all the way up until G divided by order of GSN, right? Okay, so because this is not a multiple of P, one of these must not be a multiple of P because if they were all multiples of P, right? So like N1P plus N2P plus all the way up until N, N, oh, that's not good. Uh, v, 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 right? Then what I could do is I factor out all those Vs, right? And multiply them by P, right? And then it's also a multiple of P, but it can't be that. So one of these must not be a multiple of P, right? So say it was, say, O, S is not a multiple of P. Then, order OS equals the order of G divided by the order of GS, which again, we know what the order of G is. It's going to be M times P to the N divided by the order of GS. Can't be a multiple P, right? So that means that I must cancel out this PN. Uh... So it's not a multiple of P. Thus, GS must be V times P to the N. Right? Okay, then we know that the order of GS must be greater than or equal to PN. Now this is the important part here, okay? This is the very important part. Now, the second thing we're going to realize is that uh, the order of GS right that the order of GS is less than or equal to PN by realizing 
that this is going to be the order of s, right? Because it's in here. It's in here. It's in omega. And all of the elements in omega has order p to the n. Okay? I'll show that s is going to be a union of disjoint left cosets of this. Because if I had uh, h an element of s such that h is not an element of gs, right? So it's like in a picture might look something like g s g g s and h is going to be here right then i claim that g times g uh, h times g is an element of s for any for any uh g an element of g s because if it wasn't, then g times s, which, because this is the stabilizer, right? This is the stabilizer. This must be equal to s by the definition of the stabilizer. This must contain, by definition, uh, sorry, g times h. g times h on the left-hand side. Right? Um, right, so this must contain G times H, which as we discussed, is not an element of S, right? Because we assume that it's not, but that's a contradiction because this is an element of S that's not an element of S. Therefore, that must be true Sorry, it's going to be right cosets. Right cosets. Um, yeah. Right cosets. And this is for, for any G and GS. Thus, we have it that GS times H must be a subset of S, right? Because I can do that for any G. Therefore, that it must be a union of these, right? Because if it wasn't, that wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> so it must be a union of right cosets. And therefore, the order of S, the order of S is bigger than or equal to the order of G, S, G, S, right? Oh, Look at it right there. That's it. This is P to the N. And because P to the N is greater than G to the uh, GS, and GS is bigger than or equal to P to the N, there's only one way for this to be possible, and it's for GS to be equal to P to the N. QED. Oh.